Hi, my name is the Nuclear Rabbit, and today I am going to be playing a sorceress in Classic. We start off the run with a quick cry about our stash size before almost dying to some dark hunters. I follow it up by running around the stony field a bunch while being chased by some carvers. Apparently, this run is pretty high because I draw quite the crowd as I run through the Tamu Highland. I throw some fireballs their way, but it's just too many of them, so I need to keep moving because there is no way I'm fighting them. Classic doesn't have any runes, however, the tower is still the best way to level early on in the run because it's filled with unique monsters that give 5 times the experience. A hand axe drops for my troubles, which makes sense because I'm playing a caster. It is the Gnasher, an excellent early game item that will make a melee character very happy with its crushing blow and open wounds. The drops from the counters are much less impressive when she isn't dropping runes. The smith will be the first of many to get static down and finished off with just a few fireballs. We take his hammer and imbue a staff to see if we can roll some plus to skills. We do end up getting a skill, but it's chain lightning, which we aren't using. We make our way to Andariel and seeing as she is very weak to fire we very easily take her down. She rewards us with a rare ring for our troubles. The ring ends up having a bunch of mana and some fire resist. In the desert we encounter Flame Mame, who drops us our first pair of gloves. We get another bit of fire resist and some magic find. And just as with the ring, very decent for the early game. Our habit of finding cool melee items continues as a death beetle drops us a unique sword. It's a shadow fang and it might not look like much, but for a level 12 sword this thing has a ton of damage on it. If only we were a barbarian. Druids would do well with it too, but you know, they weren't born yet. In the maggot lair, I politely ask the beetles for some new shoes. They say they don't have any, but one of them ends up giving me the ones he ordered online that didn't fit, because he doesn't have feet. The beetle had obviously borrowed these as well, because they have Hassar's name on them. They crowned a whopping 20% faster run walk and 25 fire resist. Having found two flawed topaz, I make a quick upgrade to my helm. I buy a base from Charcy and stick in the two gems to get some more magic find going. In the claw viper temple, I laugh at the viper from the top of the stairs while I steal their amulet. Having thought the Duriel room was behind the entrance, I teleported over to the room in the back. As one does in someone else's home, I quickly light some stuff on fire, take a few of them down and leave. To enter Duriel's room, I must make a sacrifice. I have to give up my weapon before I can enter. I stick it in the hole and start drinking to forget all about it. In my drunken slumber from the thawing potions, I end up with some guy named Zanari who said he could defeat Duriel. So I take him with me into Talrasha's chamber. We run up to Duriel who starts pummeling away at us. Sanari ends up lasting much longer than I usually do and I get the static Duriel down to a sliver of his life before being forced to teleport around and kite some fireballs at him. As he goes down, a green amulet falls to the floor. I pick it up and realize it's an angelic amulet. In act 3, I become very sad as I look at my cold and lightning resist with both of them being at zero. The first thing to improve my situation is the belt I gamble from Elzix. With 18 gold resist and 21 lightning resist, this is a belt I could easily wear all the way into hell. Ormus ends up selling me an amber gnawed staff of sorcery, and with the two of them and a couple of thawing pots, I head into the Mephisto fight. I stand next to him, use static, and then fireball him to death. In Act 4, I encounter a demon named Ishual. He has a 2 skill point bounty on his head, and with skill points being the most important thing in the world, I gladly make the demon run into my fireballs to meet his demise. Hephaesto chases me through his backyard while I throw fireballs at him. He has a might aura, so walking up to him and using static will end up with me being very dead. But luckily, despite having a lava pool instead of an aquarium, he still has a lot of trouble taking fireballs to the face. Time to claim my reward at the forge. No rune drop, cause runes don't exist in classic. With my new gems, it is time to upgrade my helm again. I jam two flawless topaz in a skullcap and head into the chaos sanctuary. I pop the first two seals and the Grand Vizier of Chaos spawns in and at the moment I see him, I realize I have made a huge mistake. He is fire immune. I can use static to get down most of his life total, however, I need a plan to get the last few slivers down. I considered using my respec and I looked at doing the den and the sewers to get my skill points, however, I found another solution, a very tedious one, but it just might work. Telekinesis deals damage, the amount is as high as my school grades, but there is something there. I start attacking the Grand Vizier with telekinesis and lo and behold, his life total goes down. Stun locking the Vizier, I slowly commit Lang Che at his life total, until he ceases to be. I got away with it this time, but this won't keep on working. I decide that going for a pure fire build might not be the smartest idea and decide to start thinking about what to do. But those are all things for future me to worry about because right now there is a very big and angry demon in my way. Flames fly everywhere and when I run around to dodge them he gets pissed and runs out and tries to slap me. So rude. I run in and start staticking but I will lose the damage race so I have to back off. I go in for a second attempt, but almost eat it to a lightning spray. 
With Diablo slapping me for a hundred damage a pop, I decide to keep my distance and start throwing fireballs at him instead. He runs in for another slap and I run away and dodge some more lightning. With the fireballs chunking away at his life total, the demon ends up defeated, dropping me a giant axe and a small shield. The shield has 20 life, but not much else to use as a caster, so I sell it. The humongous axe is like a dream come true in a weapon, for a barbarian, so I sell that as well. With no more done, I am now a countess, does that mean I drop runes now? With that philosophical dilemma on my mind, I start preparing for the harder difficulties. The best place to farm in classic is Mephisto normal, because high end items don't exist and he can drop almost every piece of relevant endgame gear you will want. You can quite literally farm here until you are ready to beat the game. The drops start off with a pair of chain gloves, the chance cards are 30% magic find, a fun find. Next I end up finding a battle staff, which is Catan's staff, it has plus 1 to fire skills. The chest nets me a GG ring with 30 lightning resist and 28 fire resist. Doing all of these runs nets me a ton of gold, which always translates into fueling my gambling cravings. I end up winning a pair of 25 lightning resist boots, netting me a pair to switch into depending on what I need. They also have perfect gold find and a teensy bit of a math. The Mephisto runs are going much smoother at this point, well mostly that is. My resets are good and I've gained a few levels, all I'm doing is just keeping on farming until I get more endgame gear, in the meanwhile I find another angelic amulet. A few runs later I get rewarded with the next piece of endgame gear, whereas in the expansion this helmet is mediocre at best, Dusk Deep has a whopping 15 resist all and some damage reduced, making for an excellent helmet and another happy addition to the gear. It's followed up by a unique ring, which ends up being a 26% Nagel ring. I decide to change up the farming to go and clean up some quests, which brings me to the ruined temple, where Serena drops me a unique mace. At first I'm disappointed in finding another amazing melee weapon, until I look at the stats and see that it has a whopping 50% fire resist. To complement my new crush flange, I go to Faras, where I buy a shield with 3 sockets so I can make the classic version of Ancient Splash. At this point I am stacked and at a very high level for normal, so it is time to head into Nightmare. In Nightmare I go and pay the Den of Evil a visit for a plus skill and head towards Tristram, where my rare ring, I mean Kane, awaits to be saved. While making a safe path for the Horadrim to escape, I end up finding a set belt, giving me two pieces of hussars. Yet another thing that would be amazing, if only I was a melee character. The ring Akara gives me is trash, so I put Kane back in his cage. The outer cloister turns out to be a dangerous place, filled with quill rats. I end up barely making it out of the fight. The catacombs end up introducing me to Stormwhite. He loses his shoes in gratitude. Poison and lightning resist and the map, he's too kind. With Andario still having very poor fire resist, I talk to her about the advantages of wearing a crush flange while sizzling her face off. It takes some running around to clear some trash mobs around her, but the fight ends with her exploding and dropping yet another amulet. This time however, it is of a dollar snare. In Act 2 I cannot delay the decision any longer, it is crawling with fire immunes and I need to decide what my second skill will be. I thought about going lightning on Nova, but I just don't have the mana to support that. So I decided to go with a cold skill, the only question now being which one. I start off by going with blizzard, making cold damage rain from the sky sounds excellent. But the auto aim proves its worth, so exactly one monster later I am pissed off and annoyed at not hitting anything and decide to go for Frozen Orb instead, which has the added benefit of me being much more comfortable playing it, as I am very accustomed to working with blue balls. Frozen Orb is also amazing in the Maggot Lair, which is always a plus. The Durial fight starts off with me staticking him up to halfway and forgetting that in Classic you can just static him all the way down, no matter the difficulty. However, my muscle memory takes over and I stop staticking way too early again and start throwing fire fireballs at him. It gets the job done though, and I am rewarded for my troubles by being reminded that Barisa doesn't exist yet, 3 town portals and another Catan staff, so nothing. I ramp up the player count in the Act 3 forest, with Eldritch still being a glint in his father's eyes, it is one of the best places in the game to get some levels. In the spider cavern I do something that is high on the do as I say not as I do scale and teleport blindly into a pile of spiders. Listen kids, I'll repeat this, do as I say, not as I do. This kind of stuff will kill you. 
I start off fighting my arachnophobia but end up having to retreat to survive. From here I can work my way back through Sazark and end up clearing it. The trend of me finding great stuff in boxes in the forest continues when I open up a chest and drop a pair of mage fists. With a plus skills, faster cast rate and mana regeneration I cannot think of anything better that could even drop in classic for my build, so I very gladly equip them. I go ahead and pick up the kit bin before making my way into the flayer dungeon, where I immediately drop another pair of some of the best gloves in the game. While they are for a different build, an energy shield sorcerer would be ecstatic about finding some frost burns, despite only one out of the 5 mods even being remotely useful and none of the others making any sense, a 40% increase to the mana pool is just enough to make even the calmest of energy shield wizards join up for an episode of sorcerers has gone wild. With my gear beyond stacked at this point, I will never need to farm for items again, so so I decide to do some housekeeping and toss out my magic finding gear before heading to Travencore. I lure out the council members with the promise of some free candy and borrow the flail from them. However with the rest of them having seen what has just happened they decide to bunker down. So I just start shooting frozen ops into the building to get rid of them. They try to run and hide but I am much too persuasive and convince them to let me through. I'm playing a frozen op sorceress and I'm at the Mephisto nightmare fight with max resist. After 23 years of farming him I could probably do this fight in my sleep. Sadik clears up most of his life to and I finish up the fight with a few frozen orbs. The bone wand he drops turns out to be amazing with 20 faster cast rate, energy and cold resist. I would love to equip it but I'm using the strength on my cross flange to equip my boots. I wonder how bad my resist will be with all of those gone. I open up the stat screen and holy crap they are still amazing. I am so stacked that even losing a ton of fire, lightning and poison resist isn't a problem. So I decide to equip the wand and just put the stat points from my next few level ups into strength so I can equip the shoes. I follow it up by picking up my order of 2 skill points and making my way into the chaos sanctuary. With my newfound faster cast rate I feel much more confident in teleporting around so I decide that clearing content is for suckers and have a little chat with the Grand Vizier of Chaos again, this time killing him before I can even see what he spawned with. The Venom Lords end up being quite a close call as they spawn right on top of me, but teleport is busted so I create some distance and start throwing frozen orbs at them. Having beaten up his children, like Mario making his way through the Koopa Kingdom, Diablo decides to do a Bowser and finally comes down and checks what's going on. He throws fire and lightning at me and I decide that my life pool is too small to safely get close enough to static the demon, so I just start throwing frozen orbs at him. However, the demon runs up and stands right next to me. I am not one to look a gift lord of terror in the mouth, so I just go for it and static him while getting slapped around. I won't be able to tank the fire up close, so I need to move, but at this point the static has done its work. I finish up the fight with a few more orbs and am rewarded with a weapon that is named after Mark Wahlberg's Dirk Diggler from the 1997 move and Boogie Night. And well, there's a thing I never thought I would ever reference on this channel, but there we are. I head into hell. I start off with a resistance check, and with my poison resist being the answer to everything in the known universe and the rest of them all being higher, these numbers make me very happy. My poison resist being my lowest is also immediately solved when I drop a venom ward in the underground passage. In the jail I quickly realized that even though everything is looking amazing on paper, the game can still be really mean when it wants to be. I barely make it out of the way of some archers, but then my ego takes over. I am a sorceress, I own this game, this cannot happen. So I decide to open the door and get back into the fight. I start throwing frozen orbs in there in a fit of rage trying to kill the things that stopped me. With the fallen cleared I enter the room, my life total plummets down and I teleport out again. I need to calm down, if I keep playing like this I will die. I decide to do the smart thing and leave the archers alone, making my way to Andario. Having cleared out her minions, I start throwing fireballs at her before deciding that I would like to wear that venom ward I just found and drink some antidotes. This ends up being a smart call, saving my life as my life total jumps off a cliff in the face of all the poison damage that is thrown at me. I decide on a different approach and get some distance before throwing orbs to slow her down and fireballs to attack her low fire resist. She ends up dropping me a rare rusted armor. I'm sure that if this was the expansion that would have been a scalders. In act 2 I make my way towards the ancient tunnels to do some leveling before heading into the claw viper temple where things get rough. So I decide to just start a campaign for escalators for vipers while they wave goodbye to their amulet. Despite wanting to teleport it badly I let frozen orb carry me through the maggot lair. 
The tomb started off with saving and exiting in a panic, ending my streak of playing well after only an act. Oh well, still longer than I usually last. I start off by trying to static Duriel down, but my static range is so bad I barely get a cast off between his punches and seeing as how I have 500 HP and Duriel hits like a throw, I decide to kite him around his arena while whittling him down instead. A slow and steady proposition, but one that gets the job done without my life total hitting the fear at zero. In Act 3, I find out that the game is a fan of Limp Bizkit, with the Force just having one of those days where everything is fucked and it wants to justify ripping someone's head off. And despite my best course of action being to stay away, I have to go in and encounter multiple fanaticism mobs and some mic monsters to top things off. For the first time in my life, I am happy to make it into the Great Marsh and get away from all of it. If only that was all of it. Not even a few seconds in, the souls start throwing their lightning at me. Realizing this forest hates the cure and isn't just a forest, I start my Great Marsh forwards. Because there's no way I'm teleporting this and coming out alive. Taking out my first boss pack of souls, I figure the way is now clear and I should be able to have a nicer time. However, the game immediately shoves that feeling right up where the sun doesn't shine, the claw hyper temple. As lightning flies towards me even before I can see the clones, I end up luring a second boss out and my frozen orbs make quick work of it. At this point I decide to do like the story about the tortoise and the rabbit and take it slow, which immediately gets rewarded as the very next thing I encounter is a pack of might aura souls, whom I also lure out to my little inconspicuous cemetery and take out. Surely it'll be over now. Well, don't call me Shirley because the very next corner once again starts throwing lightning at me from beyond the screen. Seriously, is the game hungover or something? It's so mean today. Adding a fourth super unique clone to the population of Deadsville, I breathe a sigh of relief as I relax a bit by bullying some swamp dwellers into giving me the jade figurine. A few minutes go by before once again I am being shot at from beyond the confines of the screen. This time I decide to just go to the left instead, immediately getting rewarded for my decision by having enough lightning thrown at me to power a small country. On second thought I decide to not go left because it is a silly place and deal with the clones before finally making it into the flayer jungle. I go in slow but after defeating some puny flayers I decide that I am done with the forest and start teleporting through, almost dying only once in the process. Having retrieved Ormus's kitchen knife I look at my final reward, a 24 gold 5 fire resist with mana after kill ring, decide to wear it for the 5 fire resist anyway, cause the nagel ring wrapped around my fingers is completely useless at this point. Heading into the ruined temple I am stormed by fans who have subscribed to my channel, like you have right, and quickly pick up lame essence tomb. Hell trap and call always one of the hardest parts of any solo cell found run, often a giant dumpster fire of super unique enemies tossed together, luring them all the way back to the waypoint so I am shielded from being shot at by the other things because unlike on a friday night I only want to take one of them at a time. I kite around Ismail Violent, using my experience with blue balls to yurtle him around until he hands me the flail. The flame finger ends up out healing my damage, so I decide that I am done being a responsible and alive human being and decide to teleport straight in to start luring away the council members. They don't need to go far, as long as they're not here. So I just pull them away from the orb a little, teleport to the back of the building, make the flail, run in and smash the orb before they can file a complaint about what is happening. Or so I thought. My first attempt at hitting the orb whiffs, but I circle around and go for it again, this time compelling the orb to explode. I teleport out to get a safe place to wait for the Durans to open, and once I've waited long enough and I'm sure it's open, I dive back in and escape the dangers of Travancore, heading into the comforting safety of the Durans. Because not is more comforting than teleporting a sorceress through the Durans of Hate. It just feels like home to do it that way. I wave at the dolls as I make my way through and enter level 3 for the Mephisto fight. And if teleporting through was home, this is like waking up in your own bed. Throwing frozen orbs at the demon has always been a steady thing throughout my life, no matter what else was going on. My sleeping with Mephisto metaphor is cruelly ruined when Void Voidbringer just casually walks into the fight. Like how, what, why, how did he get here, what in the actual hell, what is he doing here? Decades of runs and now I'm recording he decides to just barge in instead of just watching from the sideline. This complicates the fight immensely. Wyant can heal Mephisto and because my damage is low this means that if I don't get rid of Wyant he can just out heal everything and make the fight unwinnable. I question myself about what I have done to deserve this, what crimes I have committed that that I am paying for so cruelly, as I am trying to get Mephisto to give me all his attention again and make Wyant piss off, ending up with only Wyant 
I get cursed. A sure tell sign I need to GTFO, so I head to Ormus. When I come back, the two demons are focusing on me, and while I am a massive attention hog, this is too much, so I teleport to the other side of the river again. I head back up, and this time, by some miracle, I end up pulling only Mephisto to the other side and decide that to keep him here, he needs a target, so I just start face tanking his attacks while throwing orbs and praying for the best. Frozen Orb ends up taking the fight, and with Mephisto joining the ranks of the dead, I am finally done with Act 3, so I take the portal into Act 4. Act 4 starts off with me teleporting so fast the game can't even keep uploading. I hadn't seen this since the LOD times, but apparently it still happens in the remaster. Makes sense, but I hadn't seen it yet, so I give the game some time to catch its breath and head in for a second attempt. With nothing stopping me, I get to the final waypoint. From here on out, it is all a matter of safety, consistency and survival. So I immediately start teleporting into the Chaos Sanctuary like a lunatic. Giving no thoughts to safety regulations, I make my way to the pentagram in the middle. First things first, I need to make sure that I have a safe haven to work from at all times, so I start clearing out the first few stragglers. With the pentagram conquered, I start working my way through the Chaos Sanctuary. I decide to go up and check with the Grand Vizier of Chaos first, once again pulling some stragglers and getting rid of them. I end up blowing a few stragglers from the Infector side as well, but as long as they aren't extra fast, it is not a problem. With the focus of my build having shifted to Frozen Orb, my fireball damage has started to become lackluster. A fact shown by every Oblivion Knight being cold immune and ending up taking forever to kill. Everything that isn't cold immune however goes down without a problem. And for once in this run, something is easier than expected. The inhabitants of the Chaos Sanctuary are on vacation and except for a few stragglers here and there, it's completely empty. Seriously, this might be the emptiest Chaos Sanctuary I have ever seen. I could just walk up to the Infector spawn and only needed to kill one pack of Champion Ghosts to get to the Lord to Sai spawn. With the Chaos Sanctuary being cleared, I summon the Sai, clear his knights and decide that it's time to nut up or shut up. So I face tank the Sai while throwing fireballs at him until he goes down. With the Sai's lot now vacant, I decide that I do not want to deal with more enemies like that. So when I encounter Moldrul, who is extra strong, extra fast and able to cast lower resist on me, I decide to pull him away and introduce him to his new living quarters, all the way far out in the back. Having pulled him away far enough, I wave goodbye and teleport back to the Grand Vizier spawn location and throw a few orbs at him. With that, it is time for the final fight. I decide that I do not want to risk it with the statics, so I stand far and safely away throwing orbs at Diablo. The demon has obviously not read the script of this movie because he starts imprisoning me in bones like I haven't been telestomping the entire game. I keep throwing orbs at the demon, hoping to explode them straight in the middle of him because that makes all the shots hit and deals him the most damage, but I accept it when I have a non-perfect shot because the only thing I want at this point is to survive. I don't care about it looking good anymore, I just want to win. Even near misses are dealing me hundreds of damage and that is an exchange rate my health pool cannot afford. I need to be careful here, I need to dodge every single beam and flicker of fire that is thrown my way. After a battle not dominated by static and thus actually being really fun and engaging instead of a massive static fast, Diablo goes down dropping another set amulet, netting me my third angelic amulet for the run. But more importantly, the run is completed. This was my first time ever playing a sorceress in classic. So here's the final recap. I'm using this rare bone wand, a dusk deep, a dual resist rare armor, a prismatic amulet, ancient splash at home for a shield, dual res magic find boots, a dual resist ring, a dual resist belt, another dual resist ring, and for gloves I am still using the mage fist. Stat wise I did strength for the gear requirements and I went up to 41 dex Dexterity in case I would end up finding a spectral shot unique blade. However, it turned out to be a hopeful spec because I never did end up finding it before finishing the game at level 50. I ended up with 40 faster cast rate, 37% extra fire skill damage, minus 30% to enemy cold resistance and went down all the way to 22 MF in the end after dumping all my MF gear. For skills I maxed out Frozen Orb and put a few points into the Cold Mastery. If I would level up more I would put more points into it. For the lightning skills I have 1 in static, 1 in teleport and 1 in telekinesis which actually ended up saving the run. For my fire spells I was working on maxing fireball and I would follow that up by putting more points in the fire mastery. I would put all the remainder points into the synergies for fireball. And there we have it, Queen Vuurball. If you're still here, let me know what you think about this style of content and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.